stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Four six. Experience with them. 
Now, have I bought more Columbia Sportswear shirts? Yes. And that's, that's uh, a way that you can um, build a brand before, during, and after. So anyway, um, yeah, that, uh, if anyone wants these, I'm, I'm going to switch them up so you guys don't know which. <laughs> so um, where is my pointer? So let's move forward. Background, yeah, like Dan said, born and raised. Um, in Vancouver, a lot of history. I, uh, at some point, you guys should really get to know there's so much available for Vancouver. Um, Vancouver, um, real quickly, was um, uh, we're the first Vancouver. We, were, we got our name before Vancouver BC did, even though we're named after the same guy, Captain George Vancouver. He was out at sea. He never even set foot here. He was out at sea, sent one of his people under him to explore, came upon this area and said, wow, oh, it's beautiful. I think I'll name it after my boss. Went back, they sailed north, 29 years later, BC got their name. So we are the first. Anyway, a lot of history. So, that's me, yeah. Bay, that's a bay, um, little Shumway. So, the first R is represent, and actually, um, and some notes. Um, um, so, back, um, when I was 14 or 15, and, uh, um, I have an issue in my car here, um, a 1997 issue of Fast Company Magazine. On the cover of it, Tom Peters wrote an article called A Grand Hall View, and that set a fire for the whole in business industry awareness. He really put it on the map in terms of branding and being able to know how important it, how relevant it is. Now, some of you may be in a position where you can't affect the change of the branding of your company. You can't go and say, I think we should do this. Some of you may be independent, maybe in the real estate, maybe mortgage broker, maybe your own business. Each of you are a brand, not just as a company. A company is a brand and I'm a brand. I'm a brand not only to myself and my customers such as you, but I'm also a brand to my boss. And my branding is twofold because I want to become so indispensable, so valuable, there's no way he's going to get rid of me. And that's Bill Wills, by the way. Um, so, branding affects everyone in this room, whether or not you have the ability to change a company's uh, material. So, think about that as I move through the presentation, how it can apply to you, some ideas. Um, so, as I said uh, earlier, to visual um, and emotional accumulation of experiences. Actually, that was supposed to be for the next, I will come back to that, probably a five brand. So, uh, when you think about some brands out there, you think, um, like Walmart, some of you may know the table. Okay, let's. Yeah. Um, your Jones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Panera. Each of them have developed, obviously, they have a lot of money, but think about as you go through your day, whether you're seeing it on TV commercials or just driving down the street, how do these brands? Themselves. And why are they doing why are they using the colors they're using or the, and the, the letters, the fonts, everything. Um, and think about how, how it appeals to you. And consistency. Now, throughout your, your business, you're going to have uh, experience points, as I call them. Things that they're, a person may see your card, they may see you at a networking event, they see you stand up. They may see your sign on the side of a car. They may see a sign if you're a, a brick and mortar. They may see your sign on the store. All that needs to be consistent and convey uh, a quality, consistent uh, message that is not going to change. It, it, it should be something that, uh, when you build it, um, some questions to ask is, what is your story? Um, what what are the values that I want to uh, present? Uh, one tool that I, uh, I've taught people to use is write down keywords 
that you believe represents, best represents your business. Adjectives, um, being able to take that and, and formulate a coherent strategy um, for, for brand purposes. Goals, what is your end goal? What is what? Define who you're trying to go after for like real estate. Everyone in this room could be a real estate agent, but everyone in this room could be doing something different within that industry. Dan, you could be specializing in uh, new homeowners. Um, Paul, you could be specializing in historic homes in downtown Vancouver. Um, Barbara, you could be doing luxury homes. So everyone has a unique um, spin on um, what you're able to do. And I definitely would buy a luxury home from Barbara if I could afford it. <laughs> um, so think about how you can uh, specialize and be unique and stand out. It's all about, as we, uh, if you went to business classes uh, in college, the USP, unique selling proposition. How can I separate myself? How can I stand out? For me, I don't want to just sell you printing. I want to be able to take that printing that we do and be able to give you ideas and be able to build on the printing to be able to help you uh, brand better. There's been numerous times, and I'm not going to point anybody, I don't think there's anybody here today, but I will point out typos in business cards. I'm not afraid to, but I do that because I want to help you. I want to be, I want to be able to make sure that it's, it's tight, it's, it's solid, it's, it's ready to go out there in the marketplace that there's no question about who you are. So, just, just saying, if I do come to you, don't be offended. <laughs> I just want to help you. So, and then, um, and, and, and so represent means who you are. Um, if you don't have a logo, um, and you think it's appropriate to help build your brand, go for it. Um, there are a number of resources, um, Fiverr, for instance, the two R's. You can, you can get very affordable logos. Um, you can work, we have a graphic designer. You can, there's, there's people out there on Fiverr as well that can help you even get the right font. Um, lots of resources for that online. Um, just uh, Google Brandy um, or company. <laughs> Differentiate, differentiation, again, being different, being unique, being a positive, it needs to be useful and valuable in terms of as you're constructing your, uh, your brand. Something that's, uh, is, um, how do I put it, uh, that they can come to you, they, they realize the value that you have that you offer in what you do. Type of brand, uh, that's just um, going out there and seeing what types of brands are available, even with your competitors, being able to see uh, what, what exactly are they doing? Why are they doing what they're doing? I love to pick up magazines I never or uh, read or listen to stations, radio stations that I never hear simply because I like to figure out why are they advertising things and who are they advertising to? And what, uh, what makes them want to advertise here? And it gives me ideas. So be, get out and think outside the box. No box. All right. Um, represent, that's some of the things we do uh, in terms of uh, representation. Resonate. Now that you have who you are, you want to be able to resonate with your audience. You want to be able to have your brand in such a way where, and I chose that word because it's actually a verb. It, 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 it's an action statement. It, it resonates. Uh, and there's a Webster's term. Um, they define it as something that uh, produces a loud, repeating noise over and over, which is kind of relevant. You want to be able to resonate. Speaker that at that church resonated with their their people, um, but whatever you do, find a way to to create uh, relevancy and resonate with your uh, audience. It goes beyond the visual experiences. Um, being able to be uh, uh, positive, have a good representation, 
not coming to professional connections and cut off shorts and a tank top, you know, um, being able to uh, be the utmost quality person in terms of following up, um, all that leads back to the branding. Uh, and even before you start doing your sales and marketing, you need to uh, make sure you have your brand solid because that's the base on which the marketing and sales uh, are activated. Now this is um, something that uh, as it's more I think towards the uh, marketing phase as you move towards that area I think you want to lower the risk find ways so there's companies that say free consultation free trial and you want to lower the risk you have for people buying the more people that will buy so provide something useful informative free report um, something that they can. Uh, learn from. There's, uh, there's more and more companies that are actually going to more free models because they'll make money on the back end. And then we'll also find things, again, like uh, the uh, person our group represent, go out there and find things uh, that resonate. If, you're, if you find yourself listening to a commercial over and over, you're, oh, why am I still watching this commercial? I know, why? Even in the newspapers and the magazines you read, find out what what is there an emotional attachment? Is there a story behind it? Create your story. Things that resonate. Revolve. Well, the reason why I chose revolve versus retention or loyalty, which is applicable. You revolve around the customer. When you're revolving, you're revolving. You're going around your customer. Listening to maybe their social media, what they have, their, their comments, how they view their brand, uh, you're understanding the needs, you're staying relevant in what you do. Um, circle wagons. So, like, that's kind of another analogy how the Old West used to circle the wagons. Uh, to keep, uh, as part of it is to keep out the competitors. You want to revolve in such a way where there's no way your competitors are going to get at your customers. You're, you're such a useful and valuable brand that they, there's no reason why they should go anywhere else. Um, one of the companies that I used to work with is called Monopolize Your Marketplace. You know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, they had a premise where you want to build your business case so well, much like a attorney that is speaking before a judge or jury. You want to have so uh, the reason such that it would be crazy not to do business with you. And you want to present, be able to have that, whether or not you use it, you want to be able to have that mindset where there's no way um, that uh, you're going to get, you're going to lose competition to the competition. Oh, I mentioned uh, P. Diddy. I don't know if you uh, watched P. Diddy or Top Daddy or whoever, he's changed his branding. Um, but every time he gets on the TV or any sort of public uh, uh, speech, he's always pitching, I don't care what it is, he could be promoting uh, something else, but he'll always promote himself. He'll always uh, speak uh, about the next thing. And that's part of, um, the challenge is, especially if you have a lot of products, um, getting the awareness out there you have other things that are available. And, and it's kind of back to uh, Revolve, where you want to maybe find different ways. Not everything has a message in the way that when you present it, sometimes it likes to have a little different message, a little different, but that still it relates to your brand. Tweak it, um, find. Uh, I say write out um, logos or taglines, well not logos, but taglines or mottos, and without any regard to judging them. So, and that's part of building your brand. There's a whole thing on that, but we more time. Have fun, brainstorm, a little bit early. Is there any questions? Without writing any questions. You feel your okay with where you're at, um, and this may be just something for you to take away. Um, that, uh, yeah. Michael, when you have business cards, is it better to have less information to bring people to you or a little more information? Well, I 
subscribe to the, the mentality that a business card on one side should be your information and the other side should be a marketing message. Use both sides. So, and then and then craft and maybe order a thousand business cards with that message. Think about it, how you talk to people, uh, talk to your clients, say, what do you think about this? And ask them feedback. People are okay with uh, giving you critical comments about who you are and your brand. Don't be afraid to ask your customers what they think. Um, but for that is, is yeah, branding your your offer, your call to action. There should any any time and let's get more into marketing. Anytime you pre produce any sort of marketing, should always have a call to action, and again, should always have a lower your risk type of mentality, where you're you're uh, being able to offer. Uh, 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 pitch where it's easy for people to do business with you. But getting back to that, yeah, data on those, because they need to know how to get a hold of you. So, and, and again, it depends on your market. If you're marketing towards younger generation, you, know, you may involve, I think Taco Bell now is doing Snapchat. So, and then also, uh, I was gonna mention branding. Um, it, it, it's an ever-changing marketplace. I know uh, Dunkin' Donuts is dropping the name Donuts because they want to uh, be more. I think they're going to offer more products that aren't related to just Donuts. They want to become a coffee shop, yeah. yeah. They, they, they so, want to they go against Starbucks on so coffee, yeah. Keep it, um, that's good um, uh, advice for making sure that uh, you have, you, you, your name doesn't confine you too much. If you're Northwest such and such and you ever want to go beyond that, you're going to limit yourself. Um, I know more, just last week, Mormon Tabernacle Choir is changing their uh, name. They're going to be now, I think, Tabernacle Choir at Temple Grand. Because they want to drop the, anyway. Let's back up to uh, resident for a moment, if we can. Uh, I don't mean physically up there. Um, and that would be in front of people, in order to be front of mind, whether it's print or, or social media or broadcast or whatever it may be, tragedies, uh, what can we say? Um, it all comes down to your budget. Sure. So, A, from a business standpoint, from a small business standpoint, where sometimes you're living paycheck to paycheck or order to order, how do you know how much to set aside for marketing? How much of it of your time and or effort should be digital, how much in physical? Um, and then where do you come in that, that scenario? Good question. Did everyone hear what you said? About where to put your if you're on a budget. Kind of show. Go ahead. What's that? Oh, that's fine. Um, so, to answer your question, there's a couple of things I want to say. Um, I know when I was um, growing up, I used news, newspaper route, I rake lawns because I couldn't afford lawnmower, then I was able to buy a lawnmower, and then I was able to now be the big leagues. Um, and I called myself Meridian Landscaping. I think it was I was 15 years old, and I'm like, I need a brand, I need, you know, what I'm talking to you about now. And uh, I couldn't afford newspapers, I couldn't afford radio, I couldn't afford any of that. So I thought the only way to do that is to control my advertising medium. And so I delivered flyers. And I got my business. But in the real world now, for adults, um, there are a number of ways you can do that digitally. Um, Facebook advertising is a wonderful, it really depends on the business you have. Um, some businesses only need to spend two to three percent of their um, revenue on uh, marketing. Others may need to do 30 or 40. So really, I, I can't answer exactly um, catch all, but there are a number of ways and seeing efforts. But uh, as far as now, um, yeah, digital is great. Google Ads, Facebook. Um, does that answer your question? I mean, does it? Not really. No. Um, I mean, I, I, we've all heard different marketing experts say 
twenty percent of your of your expenditure should be marketing. And then when the market tanks, a lot of people the first thing they cut in their budget is their advertising. They when in fact they should be doubling. Right. So on a on a small business operator's budget, um, for every dollar they take in, how much should be set aside minimum for advertising? In your view. And then of that, how much of that should be lead behind to a business card or notepads or pens or whatever somebody's going to be using? What percentage of that percentage should they be using in terms of physical reminders? Um, one of the ways I have done that is to try and track uh, what I spent, especially with businesses I've had in the past try to form some sort of return on investment um, uh, analysis in terms of if you're going to put out um, for notepads. I know um, we tend to push these more because we, what I gave you today is I just gave you 25 business cards. Now, they're not just going to be used by you. If you write on it, give it to a customer, they see that. So it's actually so for the purposes of uh, I love things that stay in front. Uh, and uh, um, to be honest, I mean, I love pens, but certain things don't always keep you in, in mind of, of uh, in front of your customer. It's all about Toma, top of mind awareness. If you, if I go out and ask somebody, I'll answer your question in a moment. If I go out on the sidewalk and ask somebody, what's the first name you think of when you think of mattresses? Statistically, chances are you're going to go to the place that is more top of mind. Now, how to do that is different with each business. Um, and uh, if I would have uh, maybe my next procedure, I'll come up with a sheet. I actually have a full sheet of dozens and dozens of different ways to actually go out and affordably market. Everyone kind of loves advertising and marketing in together, and they're kind of separate. I would I would categorize this as more advertising because marketing has some sort of call to action. They want you to do something, buy something, say something, put your email in, some call to action. I mean, they want to get you to do something. Yeah. So, and what you were what you were saying about the uh, the <coughs> ROI. You have to market, or you have to keep track of what is your marketing dollars best spent at, because you can spend a lot of money and not get any return at all. That's why you have to have somebody that's in the digital marketing or marketing. Well, let's take you for example. You're into nutritional products. There are five people in here that are into nutritional products. You can't just rely on your national or international marketing effort to get you tone top of mind. Right. So what are you doing? Everything you can think of. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And being yeah. seen. Yeah. So if you are being seen, are you leaving anything behind other than maybe a sample, which is also a good thing. But that, that costs you money in your marketing budget. You're checking out your ROI, I'm certain, on you. Oh, yeah. But my, my, my point being, as a solopreneur, as a, as a multi-level marketing kind of person, that's where you are, and I don't mean to zoom anyway. Uh, but getting getting other people excited about it may then also get other people excited about it. Somewhere there has to be some physical manifestation how to get in touch with you. And that's my question is is it a notepad? Is it a card? Is it a pen? Is it a billboard someplace? Is it, is it just online? And we're taking the end of your time. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, uh, part of that is anytime you approach, uh, so there's, to me, there's two types of marketing. There's active marketing and passive marketing. You want to kind of spend time in both. You want, you need the active marketing to get your clients to pay the bills. And then you want passive marketing to do the, the long tail, the, the more the, the uh, path where you may not reach them or have child of mind awareness for a little while, but they'll come in. Um, and then, uh, so with that being said, active and passive, all 
always try to, uh, when you're talking with somebody about sell trap or somebody who wants to sell you marketing, try to figure out, or, or on your own, if you're going to um, do this or um, whatever, get ROI, get, say, how is this going to help me? And how can I track it? Whether, especially if it's digital, if you're going to a digital agency or somebody for help in marketing online, you need to ask as much, get the, they may not want to say it, but nail it down, get as much uh, return on investment uh, uh, on, as you can, and track that, I mean, uh, and be able to uh, ask them, hey, what's this gonna do for me? Uh, and then always ask, where do you hear me? What, what? thought I'd just add, I just looked, went online, and then go back to my telephone days. Marketing is everything you do, public relations, sales strategy, product pricing, distribution, customer support, market research, all of that, including advertising, is part of your company's efforts and marketing. Advertising is just a component of really of everything you do to market yourself as an individual, as a brand, as a company. And what you do is you offer good avenues for advertising for folks to get their word out about who they are in the business. And even if it's business card you're getting for brochures, write that down. Figure out how to track it. And there's ways to do that. Ways to do that. Track everything. Because you want that return on investment. You want to put more money into what it makes you more money. So it could be affordable. Good example, we can buy more Thank you. Raise your hand. 